This STEM activity challenge is called Paper Tower. This is one of the easiest activities to run because our materials involve just paper and masking tape. So in this video, what I want to do is I want to talk to you about how to set this up, how to run this activity in your classroom, and then some of the discussion that you can have in terms of, you know, what is the science or, or what are the students learning. So in running this activity, the students are going to get paper. They're going to get 10 sheets of paper and they could use less. Uh, they're also going to have masking tape and you're going to want to limit them, unless they're really young. Uh, you're going to want to limit them to maybe about one meter of masking tape. So I give the students uh, a meter, they get to roll off uh, a meter of tape and that's what they have to use. I also uh, leave each group with a pair of scissors. So if they choose to cut that tape in half, they've kind of got two meters of even thinner tape. So the goal here is for students to build a bridge as tall as they can. Before running this activity, I'll ask questions like, you know, what's the biggest tower in our area? What's the biggest tower in this city or in the world? Does anyone know the largest tower? And uh, sometimes students will know. Sometimes I'll leave that as a, a research question for them to go home and with their parents' help, maybe try to find it on the internet. So after talking a little bit about bridges, no, sorry, not bridges, but towers, I then tell them that we're going to make a tower. Your group is going to make a tower as tall as possible. So I, I tell the students you've got 10 sheets to use, but if you could do it with even less, that's good. So let's see who can make the tallest tower with the, the fewest sheets of paper. And again, I tell them how much tape that they can use. That way they're not going wild with tape all over the place. So that's the setup for this activity. I also tell them that, you know, I'm going to give you a three minute warning when we're getting close to the time when I'm going to come around and measure the height of your tower. And similar to some of these other activities that I've set up, um, you know, I do the same thing. I say you've got five seconds after I say hands off and you've got to let go of your tower. We don't want to be measuring the height of a tower when it can't stand on its own. So make sure you tell that to the students before they start building, otherwise they're going to be you know, frustrated at the end as they're holding their tower and they have to let go and then it falls over. So remind them that they're going to have to let go, the tower is going to have to stand by itself for five seconds before you as the teacher will measure the height that their tower was able to make it. Okay, so tell them we want a tower that's truly standing and not falling over when they let go. So students will do this. Uh, rules, they are allowed to tape this. You can either have them tape it uh, to the desk, to the floor. Uh, they can obviously use the masking tape on their actual sheets of paper, but they could also tape it to the floor or tape it to their desk if you want them to do that. Just make sure that they're all you know, doing the same surface, whether it's the floor or the desk. Um, another thing that we can do is as you come around and you measure these, measure the heights, read off the heights, you know, nice and loud so that the students can uh, take pride in the height. I usually try to start with what looks to be some of the smaller towers and then work our way up to the bigger ones. Uh, at the end, on the student worksheet that's provided with this activity, the last thing, students really like this, well, I should say some really like this, is uh, you, the teacher, uh, get to be a tornado. And you have a fan or you have a hairdryer, and you approach their tower uh, from quite a ways away just so that we can see how close you can get before you, you topple their tower. So even uh, kids that maybe they don't perform very well with a tall tower, maybe they've got a very strong, structurally uh, strong tower. So those are, those are some things that you can do. Now the science that we want to talk about, uh, and again, this is very similar to some of my other science uh, activity challenges, is that we're building this and you, you have to work as a team. You collaboratively have to work together. You have to analyze what's strong, what's weak. And in fact, one of the questions on the student worksheet asks students to take the sheet of paper and to play with it first. You know, how do we take something that's so weak and flimsy and how do we make it strong? Now students, maybe they'll fold it, maybe they'll do an accordion style, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Maybe they'll do a tube like this right here, that's what a number of students end up doing, they make tubes. And they can find uh, shapes, they can do things to, to make it more rigid, more, you know, a little bit stronger. And so I like to give them some time before they begin to, to test some things. 
And that way, if they've had a little bit of time to test it, they can talk as a group and they can throw out ideas. They can come up with a game plan after they've played with the, the thin, flimsy sheets of paper first. I also mentioned, or I, I've got here, colorful sheets of paper. That's always fun for the students. And the last thing being, if you want to give them markers to draw you know, on their tower, you can. Uh, most of them are more concerned with just building it tall, which is truly the challenge here. So science-wise, uh, you know, we're, we're looking at gravity. Gravity is pulling the tower down. We're trying to build a tower that is strong and that uh, resists the, the force of gravity. So we've, you know, if the gravity is pulling down with this much, we've got to have the same exact force acting up. So that's what they've got to do with their tower, to build a strong tower to offset the force of gravity. So like many of my activities, make sure you take lots of pictures. Um, and again, if you use colored paper, um, it makes for better pictures. Kids are going to love this. I hope that you do as well. Hi, I'm Josh, also known as Science Demo Guy. If you liked the video that you just saw, and if you'd like to see more STEM activity challenges like this, along with the student worksheets that go with each activity, the materials that you would need to run this in your classroom, the grading rubrics and the teacher instructions, all of these as editable PDFs, which means if you wanted to, you could customize it for your specific classroom, then check out my website, sciencedemoguy.com forward slash store. What you'll find is that I sell these as individual products and then I also sell them as packs at a discount. I have some very popular 16 packs and I've just created a 36 pack which I call STEM for the year. While you're there, be sure to check out the reviews that other teachers have left. We have hundreds of reviews from teachers that have loved incorporating these STEM activity challenges in their classroom and maybe you will as well.